Hey, before we get into today's news topic, I need to address something. Since I left the Navy, I've been in contact with a lot of enlisted personnel across many fleets, 2nd Fleet, 5th Fleet, 7th Fleet, and I've been getting a consistent amount of communication from those sailors about some real problems in our fleet that I cannot address alone. So I want to address them here before we begin. One, if you're a sailor in crisis, if you are thinking about harming yourself and you're not getting the attention that you deserve and the medical care you need, I want you to call the Suicide Prevention Hotline right now. This is not just for veterans, by the way. Anybody can do this. It's 1-800-273-8255. I'm very concerned about the number of communications I'm getting about sailors trying to kill themselves. Uh, the second thing that is disturbingly consistent are the number of weapon systems and engineering systems that do not operate on our ships despite being deployed over and over again. So if you are a sailor uh, that has information on any one of these topics about medical personnel denying further examination for sailors in crisis and putting them back on the watch bill when they're clearly in distress and cannot perform their duties, I need documentation. You gotta send me something other than your story and your testimony. I'll still collect your testimony because I do want to talk about this publicly, but you need to send me something uh, with some sort of documentation, whether it's a photo, whether it's uh, whatever, documentation. Otherwise, it's just a story. Second, and this is most important, don't send me sensitive information. If any of you send me sensitive information, I'm required to turn it over to the authorities and I would do that anyway. Okay, so don't send me anything sensitive. If you, if you do that, I can't help you, okay? And then finally, all comms that you send to me are subject to subpoena. There is no form of electronic communication on this earth that cannot be subpoenaed and cracked by the NSA. They can do it all, uh, just give it enough time. Okay, so don't send me anything that you think is private, because none of it is. All right, send your stories and your documentation about sailors in crisis in the United States Navy and systems that are consistently down due to lack of funding and maintenance, yet they're still uh, deployed as if they're operational, as a paper tiger, if you will, to Aaron at subbrief.com. And I'll go on and give you a further method of uh, encrypted communication for me from there, okay? Thanks, let's get back to the story. Welcome back to the Naval News segment. Today's fleet tracker is uh, pretty busy. We looks like we have a lot of assets in the Pacific Fleet. Harry S. Truman still hanging out in the med. I'm sure those sailors are enjoying some good ports of call there. And the Macon Island. Yep, she's out getting ready for a workup. All right, let's talk about these. We have uh, 296 ships uh, in the Navy right now. Of those 296, we have uh, 80 underway. 65 of those are uh, in fleets. The other 15 are you know, independent steaming operations, doing something you know, with other fleets maybe, uh, but, but not our fleets. So we have um, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh fleet, of course. Uh, really the biggest one right now is of course the seventh fleet. That's the one over in the Pacific Theater, uh, pushing uh, the flag that way. All right, we're gonna begin in Japan. Happy 111th birthday to the Ronald Reagan. So the Ronald Reagan uh, is, a, is a carrier now. So if you think it's odd that we're you know, uh, saying happy birthday after a hundred and some years to a, a president uh, who has uh, passed away, you know, obviously uh, it's, it's also because he has a, a carrier. And th this is on board the USS Ronald Reagan. Uh, they're in port in Yokoshima, Japan, uh, conducting uh, annual winter maintenance. The carrier uh, began a four month restricted availability in Yokosuka uh, in January 13th, following a five month deployment to the Middle East and Pacific. So. You know, being annual, they take this time every year to get ready for the uh, summer deployment. And we expect that she'll deploy again uh, this summer and we'll follow her on that. Let's move a little bit south down to the Philippine Sea. Talk about ships who are underway. The Abraham Lincoln Strike Group is underway in the Philippine Sea along with the America Expeditionary Strike Group uh, and, an, and the Essex Amphibious Ready Group. Multiple elements of the Navy, Marine Corps and Air Force alongside Japan Maritime Self-Defense Force are conducting uh, exercise Noble Fusion. Noble Fusion's underway right now. Very cool, very cool. So their uh, Carrier Air Wing 9 is with them. Uh, this is the one that we had recently lost, I think. No, I, I don't want to say that because I'm not sure. We did lose an F-35 recently. I'm not sure if it was uh, Air Wing 9. It might have been uh, the one on the Carl Vinson, right? Here's one of the Ticonderoga Cruisers. Uh, this one's the Mobile Bay. She is getting ready for decom. Uh, they'll, the, we're going to lose, I think it's seven of the Ticonderogas in March. 
uh, mostly on March 31st. I think we lose four on March 31st, and the other three are throughout the month, being officially stricken from the ship's list. Uh, the end of an absolute era for these uh, missile boats, missile ships. Um, quite iconic. Like in my time, they were the best in terms of, uh, you know, air defense, you know, surface combat. Uh, they carried, uh, it was over 100 uh, strike missiles. Just insane, absolute arsenal of a ship. Alongside them, they have the Fitzgerald, the Gridley, uh, Gridley rather, the Sampson, and the Spruance are all uh, DDGs operating with them. Here we have a picture of the, Amphibi or the America's Expeditionary Strike Group, ARG. And there we have the, uh, the hovercraft that take uh, the Marines' ship to shore. Very cool ride. I bet you that's a lot of fun being on those things. Oh, yeah. And here we have um, Special Operations 2nd Class Megan Dillard, uh, native of Atlanta, assigned to the WASP, Amphibious Assault Group. Uh, she's serving on board USS Essex. She stands the watch in the Combat Information Center to support Noble Fusion. So she's doing something, maybe operating a sensor, uh, monitoring the exercise, and reporting. Uh, this is a very important and common job for uh, enlisted people to do. And on, this is like the uh, surface side of a... Of a of a submarine sonarman, you know, just watching what's going on out there. Um, just a quick note, I can't help myself here. Her uniform is really worn, and if I was, you know, the chief of the boat, I would uh, go to the ship store, because keep in mind, these surface ships have actual stores where they can buy their uniforms. And I would buy a uniform for her and all of her badges. I'd even pay for the tailoring to have them sewn on and ask her to give me this uniform, and I'd give her, you know, one that's her size, because... Uh, this is really unsatisfactory in terms of uh, the, the, the wear of this uniform. Now, whenever they do laundry on board ships, the uniforms do fade rather quickly because uh, the people that run the laundry, one, they don't care about your clothes, and it's just a military uniform to them anyway. It's not that, it's not like it's your personal Gucci clothes, right? Um, and so they crank the heat up on the dryers way too high to get more laundry through faster. Uh, and that's kind of a misnomer, little tip for some laundry people, because I've done it myself. Uh, Laundry and drying your clothes is all about airflow, not just temperature. Temperature is the lesser of the two. You want lots of airflow, and then a little bit of temperature does help, you know. But clearly, they've cranked the dryers on the ship up to, uh, I don't know, flamboyer or something, because they are cooking their clothes and making them fade. Okay, so enough about her uniform. Uh, she's standing professional watch, I'm sure. It's just, uh, if I was chief of the boat... I would be uh, taking a turn. I'd be, I'd be marching my ass down to the laundry going, I'd be checking the temperatures on all the dryers. That's what I'd be doing. <laughs> anyway, um, anyway, full uh, big salute to Special Operations Second Class Megan Dillard. Uh, she's doing a fine job. Uh, here we have some uh, sailors working in the hangar deck. Look at this. There's so little room between all these assets. Like this uh, plane here, they're maneuvering it, and it's so tight. You know, you don't even want to so much as touch, you know, tips or anything. Like, you don't even want to get it close. Uh, here is uh, another shot of the hangar deck, well lit this time. Look at the uh, amount of pallets that are on board the aircraft carrier here. And uh, this gives you an idea of the amount of supply that is required to maintain these ships at sea. And, uh, you know, the aircraft carrier, you know, isn't really a supply ship. We, they go to sea with supply ships that bring them supplies. But look at all the empty pallets that they have presumably taken supplies off of during their de deployment and kept the, the pallets for, for reuse. It's insane. It's like having a Walmart or a large box store, um, you know, go along with you inside your ship in the carrier, uh, full of stores and goods that you take over time, you know, and you also restock the shelves from the supply ships that, that tag along with the carrier strike group. It's incredible the amount of logistics that is required to have these fleets at sea. Um, it's just really in, in, incredible. Okay, uh, USS Carl Vinson, here we go. Now we're getting to the strike group that did lose uh, one of their F-35s. Uh, what was it, was it the Argonauts? Was that the one? It might've been the Argonauts. I don't wanna accuse the wrong strike group. Here, here we have one of the uh, Hawkeyes coming down. This is one of the radar planes, E-2s I believe they're called. Um, Looking good. We're going to operate one of these with the French aircraft carrier uh, for the first time and uh, take off from a French carrier and see how that goes. That's uh, 
I'm not sure if that's in today's story or not. Here we go. Lake Champlain is uh, with the uh, Carl Vinson providing escort. Lake Champlain, another one of the Ticonderogas that are being decommissioned. Really sad. Here we have a destroyer pulling back into port. A uh, sailor assigned to the Arleigh Burke Guiley class cruiser USS O'Kane. DDG-70 embraced their families after returning to home port Naval Base San Diego in February, earlier this week. And there they go. Big old kiss. She's a commander, and uh, she's got the lay on. Very cool. Very. It's. I love seeing these pictures because uh, the sailors, officers, and sailors, they all work so hard, and they're gone from home for so long. And uh, it's good to see them come home again safe and be with their family. It, it, it chokes me up. I'm sorry. I just... I can't help myself. Uh, I, I love seeing that. Um, the Ionian Sea. All right, here we go. Here's the Harry S. Truman. Remember, the Harry S. Truman was on its way to um, the Persian Gulf or the Arabian Sea in that area. And uh, whenever they were told to just hang out in the Mediterranean for a little bit, here is the French aircraft carrier that they're going to be operating the uh, E-2 off of as kind of a test to see uh, if they can operate off that deck. Uh, do they have catapults? I'm not sure if they do. It looks like they might because they don't have the ramp. So, yeah, if they got a catapult, I'm sure there's no problem operating off of it. So here we have the Harry S. Truman Carrier Strike Group CSG remains in the Ionian Sea under NATO command. Uh, CSG departed uh, on December 1st. Uh, the Royal Norwegian Navy frigate uh, Nansen is with them. And uh, there's some French ships there too, but they don't. I must have missed them. Anyway, just know the French are with us as well. And oh, wow. Okay, so here's Ticonderoga CG 56 uh, collecting replenishment from the TAO. Now I want to see, yeah, this is part of the uh, Harry S. Truman. They've only been to sea um, two months now, three months, pardon me, three months. Um, and this ship is a wreck. This Ticonderoga is an absolute mess. And this is going back to my point about systems that are not maintained and uh, do not operate according to direct communication I have with sailors in the fleet that uh, email me and other forms of communication, um, tell me that our, we're putting our ships to sea uh, as if they're warships when instead, you know, a, a number of their systems internally don't work. You know, they're due to lack of maintenance and, and parts missing, uh, but they still are put to sea. And uh, a, a visual representation of that is the amount of rust that is on this ship after just a few months at sea. This is incredibly poor condition. She looks like she's been to sea for a year or more. And she has been to sea for a while, I'll give her that. But this is really, really bad. Now, this ship is going to be struck next month from the ship's list. It's going to be decomped. But that's no reason to stop maintaining her. Um, but maybe for whatever reason, I don't know, uh, they, they, they appear to not be maintaining the decks at all on this ship, CG-56. Uh, very concerning, but again, they're going away. It won't matter after next month. Uh, Destroyer 26, uh, this is another Arleigh Burke, this is Bainbridge. Uh, she's, uh, yeah, she's famous. Uh, she's, she spends a lot of time in the Black Sea. Um, she likes to go up there and show the flag. Anyway, she's with the Cole, the Gravely, uh, the Dunham, and the Norwegian uh, frigate Nansen operating in the Mediterranean, yeah. And here we go. Let's go to the Eastern Pacific. Uh, the MV-22 Osprey assigned to Marine Medium Tilt Rotor Squadron 362 idles in the uh, flight deck of the amphibious assault ship. Look at that. Okay, they're underway in Southern California after departing San Diego. So it, they're not saying what they're doing. Commonly what happens off the coast of San Diego is a training. There's a live fire range there, uh, naval exercise areas all over the place between <laughs> Los Angeles and San Diego. And so it is common to go there and do what's called a workup to get ready for deployment. And this is where you do your inspections, your tactical readiness examinations. They may have a different word for it now, uh, who knows. But basically you're getting ready to go on deployment and operate your ships at sea for greater than, you know, eight, nine months safely without running into, you know, cruise ships and stuff. And also uh, being able to uh, operate the ship for that period of time away from port. 
And that doesn't just happen. They have to work at it. And that's what they're doing now. A lot of times this workup, this training is more arduous than the actual deployment. And the theory behind that is, is if you can get through the training, you'll definitely get through the deployment safely because the training is made to be more difficult. You know, more hours drilling, uh, less sleep in a lot of cases. Uh, everything is operated in all sorts of lineups and conditions. Um, just to be sure that one, you know how to do it and that the systems on the other hand can actually function. So uh, they're doing a lot of work right now in the, uh, in the Pacific there. That's the Macon Island. That's this group right here that we're talking about. I expect them to be going on deployment, you know, in a month or so, maybe relieving the Carl Vinson, whoever's next to be relieved. I think it might be the Abraham Lincoln. I'm We'll find out when it happens. We shouldn't speculate here because we don't want to give away any operational security. Uh, I do want to bring up one more thing, um, circling back around to what we talked about uh, in the beginning about systems not working and sailors in distress. And uh, you know, I'm here for you, but I can't do anything for you without documentation. You should also take care of yourself by calling the uh, crisis hotline. Use your chain of command if it's working for you. There you go. Okay, so the Navy relieves Amphibious Construction Battalion to uh, Command Triad. So this is the CO, the XO, and the COB, Chief of the Boat. And, and a construction battalion in the United States Navy is called the Seabees. Uh, they're quite famous for working very hard and building incredible things under arduous conditions. Um, it's not an easy job, but we're relieving a couple of people. Let me read from the piece reported by USNI News, written by uh, Heather Mongilio, she writes, uh, the Navy relieved command, uh, command triad of the amphibious construction battalion two, citing loss of confidence in the team's abilities. So that's uh, very vague, but who knows? There's something going on internal to the command. That is a systemic failure. It's not like one person failed. It's not like one CEO is just too gung ho and not doing, doesn't have good leadership skills or whatever. Uh, there's something between the CEO, the XO, and 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 the COB that is causing a culture, uh, you know, problem that is that is systemic. And by removing the top and replacing them with new people, they're hoping to fix whatever this is. Uh, so, commanding officer uh, Jeffrey uh, Lenkeek. Executive Officer Michael, oh boy, Jarzes, I'm sorry for screwing up your name, and uh, Command Master Chief Matthew Turner were removed Thursday by Rear Admiral um, Minoni, uh, Commander of Expeditionary Group 2. So like the, uh, yeah, the, the, the Admiral in charge of um, the group relieved the top brass of that command. The reliefs were tied to poor command climate. Okay, so this may tie into what I'm talking about in terms of sailors in crisis and systems not working. I don't know that for a fact in this case, but this is the type of language you see whenever they relieve the top three people on a command, say for loss of confidence, resulting in a poor command climate, is exactly what I'm talking about. So um, if you're in that position and you're not getting the help you need from the commands that you're on, I want you to tell me about it, send me documentation, and if you need to, use the 1-800 number I'm providing for you. So uh, thank you for watching. I don't think we need to uh, drag these people through the mud because that's not my position here. I want to offer uh, support uh, for my fellow sailors. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye.